had a rare opportunity of sowing the proverbial bamboo seeds and of pruning early vines. I became a classroom farmer, uprooted mental and societal weeds, and sharpened the arrows and the biblical quivers for 739 days. Sounds too much? It's been two amazing years of raising social leaders right from the classroom corners at Takuvi and beyond. In digging well springs to bed fountains, I realized the daunting task ahead of us, world over. To secure tomorrow's today, to change mindsets, to groom resilient leaders, to give my students wings to soar. Yes, it's been very challenging. Did it appear easy? Certainly not. Let me share a script from Takuvi Diaries. There's a small town called Takuvi in Ghana. Takuvi is just like any farming community that is nestled among the scenery and greenery of water region. But this beautiful town became my home for two years. How did it happen? I had the privilege of serving in a fellowship offered by Lead for Ghana, a nationwide movement expanding educational opportunity to all children living anywhere in Ghana. This town became my fulcrum and my epicenter for change. As a teacher, and although I couldn't solve many of their problems, I had to think about how I could keep my students, especially the females in school, each day and give them ropes to stay relevant. The fellowship program broadened my scope and importantly taught me not to assume what people need, but with a listening ear and heart, the open-minded as the people express what they need. At Takovi, I met many amazing students. However, the reality hit soon hit me when I stepped into the classrooms and realized that there were students in high school who still struggled with three letter words. Matthew and Martha, well, not their real names, were amongst them. My colleagues and I took it upon ourselves to listen more and to dig deeper in facing the complex challenges head on. Low self-esteem of my students, poor learning amenities, no technology for learning, teenage pregnancy leading to Many early marriages were few of them. The resolution, we work with key community stakeholders to co-own the solution and challenge them to be the best versions of themselves. It's easier said, huh? But with support from partners and stakeholders, a five-fold sustainable community initiatives was birthed as a result of this. And this end remarkable outcomes. The personal development activities of the Girls Mentorship Club, founded earlier, was comprehensively enriched. Absenteeism, which was caused by period poverty, has become history. And yes, teenage pregnancy rates is now at the lowest with zero cases. And to, to amaze you that as a tech hub, with modern computers and a conducive learning space with over 2,000 exciting books. Indeed, it's a sight to behold, the student-led reading club. Wow, such amazing. To secure tomorrow today, tech and education must go hand in hand. Let's keep rolling. So, in Takovi, there is a remedial initiative that was birthed, which is called the Impacting Teen Mothers. This was set up primarily for teenage girls who dropped out of school to still believe in themselves, to be able to get vocational skills in order to become economically sustained, and also to be able to go back to school. But with targeted support, mentoring moments, and donations, which were consistently carried out, this came in handy to assist them. Now, our hitherto teen mothers are serving the great ambassadors against teenage pregnancy in their various communities. Let's move to the classroom. In my classroom, our style of learning and our mantra have altered mindsets and attitudes 
and encourage Martha and the girls, particularly to express their views and make bold and informed choices. Matthew and the boys are built to work, work very hard and work well with the girls in the community as community catalysts in order to level up collaborative efforts that are needed in driving community change. For a girl like Martha or for Matthew in a rural community, to be able to see those possibilities and excel and be well equipped to have a place in our generation, they will need more than they are given in the average Ghanaian classroom. They will need to be guided to define their dreams and map out how they want to get there. Because although the rural child may not have the appropriate words to describe their dreams, it doesn't mean that they don't have any. Our classrooms must be transformative hubs, provided that we are enabling other forms of expression beyond academic achievement. So students find their voice and agency. It should matter to us when football is what draws a child to school, as much as it matters to us when books are the attraction for a child. The two are complementary. We are exploring all avenues to unleash more leaders through access and opportunities. With these interventions, our tomorrow is indeed secured. The pandemic-stricken times we found ourselves in towards the dying embers of an opportunity to serve my beloved country, Ghana, presented its own unique challenges. And through moments like these, resilient leaders are made. Yeah. They face uncertainties head on and even with greater prospects for tomorrow. That's the belief that is rubbing off on my students. At the heart of this, I want us to pause and reflect. It's a very simple question. Do we really care to match the stark reality of our current educational trajectory, even in this 21st century, to its ideals? If so, are we really tackling the challenges with our best, or are we just committed in practice to aspiring for a savior? I don't know, and I can't tell. But what I do know is that there's a need for a deeper reflection of our leaders on the gnawing gaps that stare us in the face and how innovative and context-based our solutions must be in tackling them. Takuvi has had its own fair share. How about the many others that still wallow in despair? Are tomorrow's leaders secured enough to tackle the evolving myriad of challenges ahead? Think about it. In developing students as leaders and in creating a movement of like minds is a sure way to rewriting the educational narrative. With our individual torches, as citizens, we will collectively become a huge bonfire to illuminate the path for posterity. Indeed, our zeal must be fueled. Our motivation to aspire for a better tomorrow must be injected. Our personalized vision for our country must be inspired. But how are we going to do this? It's those small feats, those baby steps, those little gains. Our brothers and our sisters that are caught with a gleam of hope from villages to towns to the many cities. Those who look up to us for incredible organizations like Lead for Ghana, for parents, for teachers, for stakeholders, for all those who in one way or the other have invested in us. Yes, the deep knowledge that we have so much to offer to the world and cannot fill our blessed continent. That's something to think about. Indeed, I invite you to serve in your specific area of interest while consciously linking that to your role in combating inequity by unleashing leaders. In summary, let's be the change. Let's be the agents in modeling leaders who think creatively about the issues facing all children living anywhere in Ghana, from Hamile to Halfasni, from Kenyase to Keta. Indeed, we are the nation's hope and glory. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are tomorrow's today. Thank you very much.